Yeah, this is uh, the collector's edition for Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. And uh, this guy, this is going to be another review. Again, it's been a while since I've been doing reviews, but I hope you guys enjoy this one. I'm going to be reviewing the Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, the game. This was sent to me, and I gave you guys full disclosure. This is sent to me by Bad Night Namco Entertainment, and in no way is my opinion or my review going to be influenced by just because something's sent to me. And I think this is kind of standard. As a content creator, you're often going to get things sent to you, and so we just have to give that disclaimer. But thank you, Ben I Namco, for sending this out to me. And as far as a review, we're just going to dive right on into it. So, with that being said, guys, I'm Mikhail Castanova, Hawaii's favorite YouTuber and host of the number one podcast in the state of Hawaii, the Castanova Podcast. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. Cha la! Okay, I'm not gonna go ahead and do it. Anyway, roll the intro. Growing up in the 90s in Shirt, I had a plethora of cartoons to watch every day, and especially on Saturday mornings. And within that plethora of cartoons were shows that had a completely different animation style than the bulk of what I was watching, and a very very different tone too. At the time I didn't know that it was called anime, but I would catch shows like Sailor Moon, Macross, or better known as Robotech in the US, Gundam, and the crown jewel of them all being Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z was unlike anything I had ever watched at the time, with animation I'd never seen before, action that drew you in, and the characters that were just awesome. For years I wanted a video game of Dragon Ball to match the level of what I had seen on TV. And while we've had games such as the Budokai series, Tenkaichi series, Burst Limit, Raging Blast, Xenoverse series, Legacy of Goku, and the recent Fighters, there hasn't been a Dragon Ball game that had you play the entire Z arc start to finish in an open world action RPG format, well, until now. Enter Dragon Ball Z Kakarot an open-world action-adventure RPG that spans the entire Z saga with additional content and over 80 hours of gameplay. Is this the Dragon Ball game we've always wanted? Or is it another good attempt but fails in the execution? Let's find out. We're going to cover the story first. The story of Dragon Ball Z is effectively 30 years old and stars Son Goku, or commonly known in the West as just Goku, and his fights with ever-stronger villains and the search for the mythical Dragon Balls, which depending on the origin and the creator of them, will grant a user one wish or up to three wishes depending on if the Earth or Namekian Dragon Balls are used. The game kicks off with Goku having a mental fight in his mind and then taking Gohan to catch a fish for dinner, and then head home which leads to the first episode of the Z series. To say this game is a play-by-play -play of the story that's been told for over 30 years is not true as while it is yet again another game that rehashes the same story to an extent, it does however do it in its own way by giving you an open world to explore. From the arrival of the Saiyans to the Boo Saga, there's a lot to love and even more to learn, and while the game does take liberties with the established canon of both the anime and the manga, it is still exciting nonetheless. The game graphically looks stunning. While not on the level of fighters, it is still jaw-dropping nonetheless, and the animations look awesome. The characters have a great level of detail and really animate in motion very nicely. The characters all look and animate so well that you'll often think you're watching the TV show, although there are some instances of awkward movements of the characters and also lack of syncing of the mouth of the characters to the dialogue coming out of their mouths. The amount of detail put into things such as the key blast, environmental destruction, and even the effect when you power up and fly at hypersonic speeds is supremely detailed to the T. I really cannot think of anything that doesn't look good in the game. Even though some environments may look a bit bland, it overall still looks good. Bland, but good overall. The gameplay should be familiar to anyone who's played the more recent Dragon Ball Xenoverse games as well as the One Piece World Seeker and the Naruto games as it is a slanted over the shoulder view with your left analog stick controlling your movement, the right analog controlling the camera 
and buttons for melee attacks, key blast, key charging, blocking, target lock on, and aiming, and so much more. Honestly, if you play any of the Xenoverse games or the One Piece World Seeker or the real games, then you'll be at home with this control scheme. It seems complicated, but it's really not when you dive into the meat of it. The ability to access a world map and fly to almost anywhere in the game is such an evolutionary step in Dragon Ball games as this has been something that the series has flirted with in many entries over the last 20 years but has never fully implemented to the extent that it has with Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Going into the map system allows you to see all the traversable areas on both a local area and if you zoom out to fast travel to different areas on the world map and it's just something to see. Given the open world nature of the game, there's something that you must do and that's simply to explore the world. Yes, you can go from each area to just get the story moving from point to point, but by doing that you will miss out on so much and also miss out on the ability to level up your character and gain new insights into the story that regardless of the canosity of it all, is still very entertaining. So yes, that's the other aspect of this game that we need to dive into, and that's the fact that not only is this an open world Dragon Ball game, but this is an also an open world action RPG, and man does this game excel in the action RPG department in all aspects with its party of three systems, skill trees, training to level up abilities, and so much more. As you defeat your opponents, you'll begin to level up each character and earn Z orbs to upgrade their powers in the skill tree. The branching path of the skill tree enables you to power up individual special attacks or earn general buffs such as sending enemies faster or raising your power against higher level opponents. To unlock everything, you'll need to take on increasingly tougher enemies and you'll need to collect orbs from the different open world areas on the map. And before we go any further, here's a pro tip. Here's actually four of them. One, explore the world. Two, level up as much as possible. Three, definitely go fishing. And four, explore even more. Those are the four tenets of this game that you should definitely take into consideration. Now, as far as the audio goes, the game's opening thing is straight from the original Japanese show and the Kai versions of Dragon Ball Z, which is super good. However, if you grew up on the Bruce Falconer OST, then sadly you will not be hearing any of that OST at all. The voice acting is really good and a step up from the original Funimation run of Dragon Ball Z, and about even on par with the current Dragon Ball Super and Dragon Ball Z Kai series. Every line is delivered perfectly reflecting how it is in the show and even the added dialogue for the side quests and content is superb. Now let's dive into the downsides of the game as there are quite a few. The downsides of the game are the previously mentioned occasionally stiff animations as well as the fact that there is lip syncing issues, although that's not major at all. The other thing which is more of a personal peeve more than anything else is the fact that the voices for many of the characters often are the same person and sometimes they're sounding all too familiar, such as, for example, Chris Sabat's voicing of Vegeta, Piccolo, Yamcha. Raditz and more, they all sound, give, or take the same, for better or for worse. The camera could definitely use a patch as it oftentimes is all over the place and can be very unruly, occasionally. In the middle of battle, getting caught on cliffs, walls, and canyons and just leading to severe disorientation. Now with all that being said, let's go ahead and just wrap it all up, make it look pretty and put a bow on top and give you the verdict. And with amazing graphics, fluid, well for the most part, animations, bombastic combat, incredibly deep JRPG system with an incredibly long and engaging campaign spanning the entire Z series minus the filler arts like the Garlic Junior Saga and epic voice acting and OST. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is without a doubt one of the best games of 2020. One of the best, if not the best anime games. And most of all, Dragon Ball games ever made. And is one of the best games ever. 
You simply cannot go wrong if you decide to pick up this game as it is a game you need in your library and it's most assuredly Casanova approved. And that's it. That's the review for Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. I think this is one of not only the best games that have come out in 2020, which we're still within the first couple of months of 2020, but at the time of the recording of this video. But just in fact, just overall, this is just one of the best games to come out, not only this year, but I would say just of all time. I think if you're into anime style video games, this is probably the best one that's ever been made. And if you're looking for a more wholesome or more you know, feature rich style of Dragon Ball game. If you're not into fighting games, which you know, I can understand that Dragon Ball Fighters is a turn off for you, then this is definitely the game you're going to want to get. And it's just, it's that damn good. So I highly recommend it. Casanova approved, and you need this game. So, with that being said, what do you think? Do you have Dragon Ball Z Kakarot? Have you played it? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Are there things that you wish were included, like the Garlic Jr. Saga, which isn't canon, but I know a lot of people seem to like that saga. But regardless, whatever way you sway, whatever your thoughts are, let's get the conversation going down in the description below. If you liked the video, make sure you hit the like button. If you haven't already and you enjoyed the content and you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit subscribe. And with that being said, I'm Mikhail Casanova, Hawaii's favorite YouTuber, host of the number one podcast in the state of Hawaii, the Casanova Podcast. I'm signing out. Bandai Namco, thank you for sending this over to me. And if you guys want to pick it up, links are down in the description below. And with that being said, I'm signing out. Deuce as well. Too sweet. Be the elite. I'll see you on the next one. Chop. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Anyway, I'll see you. <laughs> hey, you made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. And since you made it here, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you enjoyed it. And you can always check out MikhailCasanova.com want to support the content we've got patreon as well as channel memberships and super chats and with that being said this is mikhail casanova i enjoy you guys i hope you have a great one mahalo and see you next time